Welcome to Love Under the Influence. I'm Pastor D. And I'm Pastor Tay. Together, Together, we redefine what marriage looks like under the will of God. What's up, what's up, what's up? It's Pastor D. And I'm Pastor Tay. Hey, welcome to Love Under the Influence. Today's topic is don't be afraid of confrontation. Man, listen, I have seen so many people Mm -hmm. back down Mm -hmm. from saying what they needed to say Mm -hmm. or being able to get some stuff off of their chest because they just wanted to avoid an argument. Right, right. And in that, it made things worse instead Mm -hmm. of better. Yeah, if if you're afraid of confrontation within your marriage, it's going to keep your marriage in a place called stuck. (laughs) Because if if you see something that your spouse may be doing Mm -hmm. that you don't agree with, but you're walking on eggshells in your house because you're afraid it might rub your spouse the wrong way or you're afraid it might cause an argument, yeah. it's going to keep your marriage stagnated. It's going to keep your marriage from growing or going to the next level. Yeah. Confrontation in the marriage is not bad. When as both long as it's healthy. Of, yes, as long as it's healthy. When both of you guys are on the same page, when it doesn't lead to a shower match, you should be able to come to your spouse and say, baby, I don't agree with this. Yeah. I don't think we should do this this way. Maybe we don't know enough. Let's um do a little bit more research. Mm-hmm. It's all about in your delivery and, and how you say a thing with that will determine how your spouse responds to you in a negative yeah. way or in a positive way. Because if you see your spouse doing something that you don't agree with, but you didn't say anything because you yeah. was afraid of confrontation or you was afraid of how your spouse would would respond, respond, and you knew they was doing something that was going to be detrimental to your finances or your your peace, but you didn't say nothing because you trying to to not be confrontational, but it put y'all in the place of bondage. It put y'all in a financial strain. It put uh, um, like uh, a wall up between you and your spouse. Now y'all not talking. Now y'all not communicating communicating effectively because you was afraid of confrontation. It's a form of deception too. Right. Because your spouse is thinking (laughs) in that area, you're Mm -hmm. okay. Or in this, in these areas are okay. We're okay. Our marriage is good Mm. because you you haven't said anything. That's powerful. It's misleading. It's misleading. I didn't mean to cut you out, but that was powerful. (laughs) What you said, you, you're, you're not saying nothing. Your spouse it's, thinking it's a form it's, of it's, deception. It's thinking it's okay, because because that's what's gonna happen when yeah. when 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 it comes back to bite them in the butt. Well, you didn't say anything. They're yeah, gonna say I thought everything was, was okay. cool. I thought everything was all cool. You you're yeah. not saying anything. It's like you're co-signing with what they're doing, and you could be in total disagreement yeah. of what they're doing by you not saying anything. That gives your spouse your spouse the green light. For them to move forward in something that you don't truly agree with. How can you say you love somebody if you let them go forward in error? Right. Uh, If I say I love my kids, my job as a parent is to teach them to watch, look Mm -hmm. both ways before they cross the street. Right. Or if I see them see a car coming, if I I love them, I'm going to tell them to get out of the way Mm -hmm. or I'm going to assist them in getting out of the way. In other words... How can you say you love your spouse, but you don't trust them with your truth? Mm -hmm. The truth is your family members make me uncomfortable. I can't stand when they come over here. Mm -hmm. Like, say that truth. The truth is you don't know how to manage money. Mm -hmm. You keep putting us in a bad place. Like, the truth is you can't hold down the job. You know, whatever the truth is, sometimes you got to make, you got to shake that boat Mm -hmm. in order for it to have smooth sailing. Right. It's not okay for you to have 15 jobs in the past five years, bro. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like, we have to talk about, well, I just don't want to start anything. How about stopping a thing? Mm -hmm. Stopping this pattern. Identify, maybe you have a problem with authority. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? If you, in the past five years, have had 15 different Right. jobs and you are a w2 employee mm-hmm. something is wrong exactly because here's the that. thing the issue that you don't confront 
will eventually confront you. Come on now. If you don't confront the issues within your marriage because you're afraid of how your spouse is going to respond, right. that issue is going to confront you because now you up all night tossing and turning about a pain point yeah. that you have with your husband or with your wife that they don't know you have because you've you been you've been holding this stuff in for so for, for so long, afraid to confront the yeah. issue. So it's the small thing happened. You done blew up. And now your husband's saying, you 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 mad because I didn't let the toilet seat down. Or your wife's saying, you mad because I left <laughs> hair in the sink. It's, it's not, bigger than it's that. It's bigger than that. That that was just the tipping point or that was just the issue that took it over <laughs> the edge. But The straw that broke the yeah, camel but, back. But, but it's been something that they've been afraid to confront for years that's been the breaking point. So you can't within your marriage, you can't be afraid to have confrontation. You can't be afraid to confront issues that's been bothering you of issues that been lingering for years. If you have an issue with your spouse, family members, tell them, <laughs> tell them, look, I, I, I don't appreciate your, your yeah. cousin or I don't like your aunt or I don't like your, your mom. Why? Because you know, they, they do this, they do A, B, C, and D. Well, why you didn't say anything? Well, for years you let my grandmother, violate you. Yeah, yeah. Her, for years, my wife... And you never told yeah, me. That's true. For years, my wife, grandma... So did you not trust that I would... No, I, I didn't, didn't know. trust me with that information? No. Every, it, because you know that's a lack of trust. No, it's not. Every time my wife, grandma would hug trust, me, baby. she, she would fill on my butt. And I used to come class and say, hey, baby, listen, you need, you need to check your grandma because every time your grandma give me a hug, she getting a little feel. And you feel. also accused her sister. Her sister, her. too. Yeah, they was... They, in their they, um, golden years, they was a little freaky. You know, and I had to say, look, you need to talk to your grandma because every time your grandma give me a hug, she'll get a little extra oomph in. I never, and I didn't appreciate I, I that. I never witnessed any of that. Yeah. So I'm, I'm yeah, so and he, he, Pastor D is. I, that he, is the truth. I was adamant about that. He continues to say this. Yeah. So I, and that's something. I, but I did tell you when she was living, so you had a chance to confront her about that, you know, <laughs> when she was getting a little freaky with me. I didn't appreciate that. I don't think she was getting freaky. I think it may have been frisky. No, it was freaky. Gr Grandma was getting a little freaky with me, and I didn't know. Well, either didn't way, that. you waited a very long time to tell me, so did you not trust me with that information? Did you not trust that I would take your side. No, no, I, I I trusted you with that information because I know you know I'm a trustworthy person. I know you know <laughs> that I wouldn't lie about. Um, so you wanted me to like swing that. on my grandma? I didn't want you to swing on your grandma. I just wanted you to you know tell your grandma can you control your hands? But you know, <laughs> grandma couldn't control her hands. And I guess she went back and told her sister <laughs> what she was doing. So her sister wanted in on the action too. <laughs> <laughs> they both wanted in, so there was double teaming me. Man, look, um, maybe I should have confronted her. I apologize for not confronting her. The truth is, sometimes it's hard to confront. It's hard to confront somebody you love because out of uh, being cautious, I don't want to use fear because God didn't give us a spirit of fear. Out of being cautious of how they will respond and how it affects them. When you love somebody, mm -hmm. you care about how something affects them. Right. Like whether it's the brutal truth or what, mm -hmm. and they need to hear it or not. Right. Sometimes, you know, you want to make sure you don't hurt them. But sometimes some conversations may and, be a little and hurtful. Just, just being and you just got to have them. I remember early on in our marriage, you know, that was one of the things I dealt with about confronting my mom. Oh. You know what I'm saying? Like how, how she treated you, how, you know, you did everything for her, or you loved her unconditionally, you, you always gave her the advantage, yeah. and she took the advantage of you. So that was something that I, I battled with early on in our marriage because me, never been a mama's boy, but me and my mom always had a special relationship. We always had a good relationship. So in the beginning of our marriage, that's something that I dealt with. How do I, you know, this, yeah. this is my wife, but this is my mom, so how do I confront my mom with something that I know she's wrong with and trying to protect her feelings, but protect you too, because I live with you. You the person who I'm building a family with, building right. an empire with. Right. So, you know, your your feelings, it weighs more than her feelings, you know, because 
you are the person that that I clave to. I, I you know, we we building something special with. Right. But then in the end, I'm looking at what this my mom. I want to protect her feelings and too. You want to honor. You yeah, wanted and, to and, honor her. And too. I wanted. To, I wanted to honor her. So early on, in the beginning of our marriage, I didn't know that fine line. I didn't know how to find that balance. But through through growing, through um, you know, becoming a, a, a man, growing into my own, I had to put my mom to the side. And say, look, yeah. this is my wife, and I'm not going to allow you to to cause an issue. Within our marriage, I'm I'm afraid to confront you on on one hand because I don't want to be disrespectful. But you still can't confront someone you love without being disrespectful. Yeah. Hey, mom, you look, be, you can be firm. Yeah, hey, mom, look, this my wife, and and doing it in a respectful way, but also in a firm way. Listen, I'm not going to allow you to come between my household. I'm not going right. to allow you to disrupt the flow, the function, the peace within my house when I know my wife is right, when I know my wife never wronged you, when I know my wife always had good intentions for you, but your intentions have not always been the same. So I got to choose, am I going to go a season where I had to cut my mom off, which I did, which was hard, yeah. but I knew it was the right thing to do because I had to protect my household. I had to protect the rhythm of my household. Every household have a rhythm. Every household have a cadence. And when that rhythm is broken, right. when that cadence is broken, it's up to the, the man. It's, it's my responsibility to get my marriage back on beat. It's my responsibility to get that cadence back. Right. Because when your marriage is off rhythm, when your marriage is, is off beat, you can tell. You, 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 you know, you, you can come into a room and you can feel the tension. Somebody can walk into a room and they can feel when the energy is off. Like you can walk into a room and you can feel if someone been talking about right. you. If someone says something negative about you, you can feel that vibe. And I didn't want the vibe. I didn't want the rhythm. I didn't want the cadence of our marriage to be affected by, some, by something or someone that don't live within our household. For years, I just felt like you didn't know because you never said anything. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like, I felt like, man, do he not see what's happening? Do he not see what's going on? And then anytime I said something, I felt like there was automatically a argument. Mm -hmm. I, but I, but one thing about me, I wasn't afraid of confrontation. So right. I, I was, I've always been, mm -hmm. you know, vocal. Mm -hmm. Um, and I think that, that that was one of the things that uh, I got tired mm -hmm. of confronting. And and that's what happened, you know. Yeah, I got tired I, of confronting. I, I, I didn't, it took me, you know, years to confront the issue yeah. and the issue ended up confronting me. So within the marriage, you have to be careful of what you allow yeah. Because what you allow is saying you agree with it. So I allowed it for to go on early on in our not marriage just her, for a long period of time. Her, yeah. Uh 95% of her family. Mm -hmm. Like it was just it was rough for me because one thing people know from the old Tay to the new Tay, I don't play by dear. Mm -hmm. Like people people can say what they want to say behind your back or whatever, but ain't nobody ever had the audacity to disrespect you in your face or mm -hmm. even to, to come at me sideways concerning you because they knew better. Mm -hmm. um, and that was just established because of the reputation that I had. But one thing about you, you've always been gentle. You've always been soft-spoken and you always honored your mom. Mm -hmm. So it was, it, I can understand the struggle. Mm -hmm. But it was just a struggle for me to finally say, you know what? I cannot let hate grow in my heart. Mm -hmm. I got to disconnect. But even in my disconnect, I still held you accountable. Like, mm -hmm. you've already did the conference. You've, you've already had a confrontation. Uh, at that time, she was still not submitted to the con con mm -hmm. confrontation. But me as a wife, I knew that I didn't want to deal with any resentment mm -hmm. if something was to happen to her. Mm -hmm. So I made it my duty, even though I kind of withdrew, 
to make sure that you were still a part, that you were still active and that, you know what I'm saying? And I believe that when I stopped saying something, Mm -hmm. God started saying something to you. And I, and I, I really believe why I was maybe so hard early on in the beginning, because, you know, me and my mom always had a close relationship. You know, I seen her, you know, raise me and my brother to the best of her ability and, and, you know, just, just trying to provide for, for two kids on her own. So I always honored my mom and always gave her always. that utmost respect. And it, it, it just it just always carried on. But when I start maturing as a man, when I start maturing yeah. as a husband, I was like, no, you are wrong. Yeah, because you, know, you don't I'm, even disrespect me. So right, I'm like, I'm how like, could you yeah, let somebody I'm, else was, disrespect me? I had to come to a point, my mom, you are wrong. You don't have, it's different if somebody have a valid reason to not the like, but you always, you know, looked out for her, always went over and because beyond for you. her. And, you know, you I know. couldn't, I could never pinpoint, you know, the, the issue that she had with you. And it, and it just wasn't fair to you. It, you right. it was unfair to you. So like I said earlier, when you don't confront an issue that you know is there, if you don't confront yeah. an issue that is present, the issue is going to confront you. And the longer yeah. you allow the issue to linger, the harder it's going to be for you to deal with. The harder it's going to be for the for the person who's in the wrong to see that they're wrong. Right. Well, you, you, I've been doing this for five years and you ain't said nothing. Or yeah. I've been this way for 16 years and you didn't say you didn't say nothing. And because you've been this way for 15 years, doesn't or because make you, it right. It doesn't make it right. And we have to normalize confronting negative behavior, right. not just in your marriage, but outside of your marriage. Mm-hmm. You're not going to come in here and disrespect my husband. Mm-hmm. You're not going to come in here and if I say I don't want my kids sitting in your lap, they're not sitting in your lap. Mm-hmm. My children not going to be uh, running around here uncomfortable. If my kids say they uncomfortable, you no longer come into our house because it must be a viable point. We have got to normalize confronting negativity at the head, mm-hmm. at the door. If mm-hmm. you got a negative attitude, can't nobody tell you nothing, you need to stay at your house. You right. ain't welcome to mine. Mm-hmm. And that's just the bottom line. As people, we have put ourselves, make it, why are you uncomfortable in mm-hmm. your house? Right. Just like the man said in Color Purple, you sitting at the head of your dinner table and you acting like the waiter. Right. You put you 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 go into this stance and put your house in a whole set of bondage mm-hmm. because you will not say this toxic negative mm-hmm. behavior is not allowed here. You can do what you want to do at your house. Mm-hmm. However, in my house, my peace will not be interrupted. Mm-hmm. My family's peace will not be interrupted. And you are not the head NIC or whatever you want to say. Mm-hmm. You are not in right. charge of this house. Right. Period. That's why it's important in your house. You have to set your thermostat on love. You got to set your thermostat on peace. You got to set your thermostat on joy. You control your thermostat. So as the man, if the temperature in your house is uncomfortable, you have the ability to adjust it up or to adjust it down. But what you shouldn't do is to, is to see that the temperature needs to be adjusted and you walk away as if you don't see the issue. If you because if you it. walk away as if you don't see the issue and you know there's an issue there, it's just going to cause more chaos. Yeah. It's going to cause more confusion. And it's going to cause your marriage to go in a direction that you don't desire. Anything that you build on an unstable foundation is going to fall. Right. You've got to have a solid foundation. Love, honor, trust, respect, value. All of those things are what builds the Mm -hmm. foundation. We know that Jesus is the foundation. Our friendship is the frame, but you gotta, you gotta still make sure that each each year your, your roof might not last for five years. Mm -hmm. And then you got to call somebody in to do what? Repair it. Right. You don't wait till the roof start leaking. Mm -hmm. You start examining when them five years is up, when that fourth year, you might right. say, hey, let me go ahead and fix this. Mm-hmm. But too many times, you won't confront an issue. The issue confront you, mm-hmm. and we'll use the roof. We'll use the analogy of the roof. Now, the roof has caved in, and instead of you fixing it, you go and put the blue top over mm-hmm. it. You got, the, you got the know-how. You have the ability to fix it, but you don't want to confront the roof. You don't want to confront the roof. Because you don't want to invest, you don't want to make the investment of what it's going to cost you 
to make it better. What is it going to cost you to make your marriage better? Mm -hmm. What is it going to cost you? Is it going to cost you your ego? Is it going to cost you your pride? What is it going to cost you? Because the truth is, it will cost you less to protect your marriage. Mm -hmm. It's going to cost you everything if you lose it. Right. Just for example, every year you renew your your um your tag, you renew yeah. your insurance, you renew your phone bill, you renew your 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 cable your contracts. But what happens if couples decide let, let's each year let's renew our commitment to each other. Let's renew our love for each other. Let's renew um you know our foundation. We renew everything else, everything but you don't else. renew your commitment to everything each other. Else. You don't renew your love, you don't renew your trust, you don't renew the foundation of your marriage, we renew everything because, else. Baby, everything else is pro deemed priority. priority. Mm -hmm. Everything else is deemed priority. Where would you be if we stayed the same? Right. Where would we be? Where would our children be if we stayed the same? Uh, the girls were talking uh, Sunday after mm -hmm. church. They were like, oh, if, if y'all would have stayed drug dealers, we would have five baby daddies. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? It's some type of truth to mm -hmm. that. If we want to change the, how, is it duration? Mm -hmm. is, the, is that the word I want to use? You just said trajectory. Traje trajectory, the mm -hmm. trajectory of where we were going or where we were headed. Mm -hmm. Where would our children be today? Mm -hmm. We left the streets and eliminated the excuses. Mm -hmm. And guess what we did? We confronted our negative behavior. Mm -hmm. So you can't be afraid to confront. I'm here because I want to be here. I'm a drug dealer because I want to be a drug dealer. I don't trust that God can do anything else in my life. So I'm going to stay a drug dealer. The moment I decided to trust God, guess what I did? Stop being a drug dealer. Mm -hmm. You understand what I'm saying? Right. Trust is an action word. Mm -hmm. But but just think about it. My my I got an iPhone. Every so many weeks or every so many months, my phone get an update. Yeah. When the last time have you did an update within your marriage? Your marriage got to have an update. You have to update your marriage. You have to update your commitment. You have to update your love. You Ooh, have to update good. your communication. That's good right there, when baby. When the last time have you had an update in your marriage? Ooh. Do you have enough space to go to the next level? Do you have enough space to continue that journey with the person you said I do with? Mm. You you got to make sure you update your commitment. You have to open up your capacity yeah, to receive. To receive. And your capacity to be corrected. Your capacity to be. That's even powerful, your capacity. Because your capacity to receive is easy. But your capacity <laughs> to be um, corrected. Ooh. Ooh. Man, that was, that was powerful. Ooh, man. That was powerful. This was an amazing, um, this is amazing. But before we close out, I want to tell you guys this. Prayer is vital mm -hmm. and prayer is essential. Mm -hmm. You can do individual goals and you can partner with your spouse and do goals. But I'm challenging you today to write down four things that you think are hindering your marriage. Mm -hmm. Then I want you to DM Pastor D and I at Open Wings M on Instagram so we can help you guys figure it out. Four things now mm -hmm. that you believe that are hindering you from moving forward, DM us on Instagram at Open Wings M. And Pastor D and I want to give you guys some tools because right. Love Under the Influence is a community that is here you, using our testimony right. to build marriages yes. and help you go to the next level because that's exactly what God did for us. And I'm just so excited about it, Super baby. excited, man. It's an awesome community. Judgment yeah. free. That's why we transparent about our journey. That's why we transparent about our transformation yeah. to show you guys something that's tangible, something that's, 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 that's reachable. Yeah. You know, our marriage was once headed for divorce. Our marriage was once in the pits. Our yeah. marriage was once, you know, toxic, but Ooh. now we look back over our journey. We went through all that so we can stand here today and yeah. tell you that you are worthy and you can overcome. You can overcome any obstacle that you face. Don't worry about where you are. Just focus on where you desire to go. I'm Pastor Tay. And I'm Pastor D. Peace. Peace.